have John Hunt, um, and he is going to talk about Larimer County flood planning. So let's give Karen a second to get the presentation up, and we will turn it over to John. And John, you're welcome to use the hand mic or the mic at the podium. You probably don't want to bring them together or you'll get an awkward screech. Terrible sounds. Terrible sounds. And then there's a clicker. Thank you. Well, thanks, Michelle. And thanks to all of you for being here. It's really gratifying to see so many people here who care so much about water in Larimer County. So my topic is the Larimer County Flood Review Board and... Larimer County flood planning efforts. And there is a connection between those two that I hope by the end of this presentation you'll be clear on. What is the flood review board? This is what comes out of the, uh, the land use code that the flood review board exists to make recommendations to the county engineer. Now that's an important phrase. The county engineer, many of you know him, Mark Peterson in the back row here, he's the decider. We, the board is not a deciding board, we're a recommending board. And so those recommendations have to do with floodplain development, variances to and interpretations of Article 12. Uh, who knows what Article 12 is? Anybody? Oh, Karen, Karen, do you know? Yes, I do know Yes, yes, please. Right, it's the floodplain regulations in the land use code. So that's uh, everything that deals with what you can do in the floodplain overlay district is in Article 12. Uh, map amendment proposals, more broadly map change proposals. So if somebody has a reason that they would like to change one of the floodplain maps, uh, generally the board gets involved in reviewing that proposal. And floodplain project reviews, essentially projects that impact the floodplain, bridge crossings, pipeline crossings, or that have the potential to impact the floodplain. Uh, most often, the flood review board will be asked to, uh, to be involved in that. And everything we do, all of our purview involves the floodplain overlay district. If there's something you're doing outside of that, then the flood review board doesn't really have anything to say or recommend about that. Uh, a little more about the board. We're a, a board of volunteers and we're all citizens of Larimer County. We have seven members. We have we were a little bit short of seven for a while, but now we're we're fully fleshed out. I think seven is the max. Is that right, Karen? Yes. It's as big as it's going to be. Uh, something else we all have in common is that we tend to have relevant technical expertise and professional background related to floodplains, hydraulics, engineering, hydrology. So we're, we've got CSU civil engineering professor, we've got engineering consultants, we've got a geologist, and um, I, I think that covers all of our stripes and types. Now, when we're working as a board, per our purview and also per our, our bent and our passions, our emphasis is on public safety, and something else I should have put in this slide is community resilience, which is tied into mitigation and avoidance of flood disasters. Uh, Larimer County's been doing this for decades. Uh, they've been focusing on resilience since long before resilience was cool. Another thing I like about our board is I think we do a good job of weighing the big picture on every case that we're asked to weigh in on. We take this really seriously. All of the board members, again, just it's, it's part of their bent. We, we tend to be very conscientious people. And there's a lot to consider. There's the regulatory requirements, some of which we cannot, we, we don't have any latitude on. Sometimes there is some latitude. Uh, we want to be weighing technical considerations because most of us have a pretty good idea what is technically correct. We're weighing public safety, the public good. We're also giving strong consideration to the needs, the special circumstances, and the rights of property owners. We don't, we don't take that lightly either. And so sometimes it feels like we're walking a tightrope, but 
I feel like we do a good job as a board of striving for consensus and reaching consensus. That's one of the things I'm really proud of and happy about with the board. I've been on the board for, I can't tell you precisely how long, and that's embarrassing. It's embarrassingly long. Um, but uh, in all of those years, I can only remember one recommendation that was not a consensus recommendation where we had a dissenting vote. And that's pretty, pretty remarkable when you think of how many cases we heard. Is it because we're taking it lightly and we just say, yeah, whatever? No, not at all. We take it very seriously and we work the problem until we have something at least very close to a consensus. And, and that's bringing together a lot of diverse viewpoints. Even though we have kind of the same technical and professional backgrounds, we still have different biases. We look at things from different angles. Even with that diversity, we are successful and work hard at getting consensus. And I'll just say that um, in my whole professional career, uh, being a member of the Flood Review Board is really maybe the most rewarding thing that I do or have done, just because of how fun it is to work with county staff and with the other board members. All right, more about the Flood Review Board's job. Essentially, what we're our, our role is to provide advice. Again, we're not deciders. We, we make recommendations in the realm of floodplain management. I'm gonna talk more about Larimer County's overall picture in floodplain management. Um, and so a lot of that has to do with floodplain development permit applications. If somebody has something significant that they want to do within the floodplain overlay district, and that is basically all the area that that is regulated through either FEMA, is either part of a FEMA floodplain or a, a, a local floodplain, you have to obtain a floodplain development permit. And there's an application process uh, and not all floodplain development permits are seen by the board. In fact, I don't know, Karen, is it a majority or my, it's, it's maybe a small minority of floodplain development permits that are seen by us because the county engineering department has very capable staff. It's just um, there's kind of a special slice of cases and situations that either must go to the board or are referred to the board because of complexity or whatever. Variances. We, the county doesn't have a lot of latitude in granting variances in the floodplain regulations, but there is some latitude. And in certain situations, when somebody's asking for a variance, the problem is tricky enough that it'll be, come before the flood review board. And if people want to change floodplain maps, they, they want to do revisions. I mentioned this before. Um, the, the, the county staff will ask the flood review board to make a technical review of what's being submitted See if we believe it's reasonable, if it's sound and it's justified. And ultimately, the county engineer, Mark, uh, if it's going to go on to FEMA, he has to sign what's called an acknowledgement, community acknowledgement. And we give recommendations as to whether or not uh, the county engineer should, should sign the acknowledgement. And then special reviews. Uh, I think I mentioned this before. This is where, uh, you know, roads... Um, road crossings, pipeline crossings, and so on. It's in the flood review board's purview to review the technical aspects of that. Okay, also occasionally, this is rare, but occasionally something that's not in any of those categories is when something is going on that people are a little upset about. Maybe it's uh, somebody, a neighborhood discovers that a certain aspect of the floodplain ordinance is causing restrictions on their neighborhood that they didn't know existed, they weren't aware of, they become aware of it. That creates a great deal of frustration. And sometimes those cases come to the flood review board. If you want to learn more about the board, that URL there, larimer.gov slash boards slash flood review board will tell you more than what I've told you here. By the way, I failed to mention that there's another board member here, Travis Roundsville, and um, so Travis, as I go on here, please interrupt me if I say something stupid. 
that could happen. You know that very well. Also, uh, somebody who's not a member of the board, but who works closely with the board and is at every meeting is also here, Karen Nizat, with uh, Larimer County staff. All right, now talking about, uh, this is now moving into flood planning and really flood planning in almost any community in the United States starts with floodplain management. The biggest component of flood planning is floodplain management. Um, so that's through the county floodplain ordinances, enforcing those, enforcing state statutes and regulations. And both of those things, the county's ordinances and the state statutes, really their foundation and the bulk of their content really comes from the National Flood Insurance Program, which is which most of you know as FEMA. And so I was going to talk about the history of the National Flood Insurance Program, but I don't want all of you to just drop, you know, drop your faces down on the table. So what I'm going to say instead is it's a, it's a carrot and stick program. It's got goodies and it's got strings attached. So the goodies are the National Flood Insurance Program makes it possible for people to purchase flood insurance. There isn't really much of a private market for flood insurance. Uh, where it is available, it's, it's rare, and where it is available, it's highly expensive. However, it is more attainable, more affordable through the National Flood Insurance Program. You could say, I don't know if anybody at FEMA would object to this term, but it is subsidized flood insurance. It's subsidized because the premiums that people pay don't really pay, uh, cover all the expenses of flood insurance. It covers a lot, but taxpayers are always pitching in when claims are paid out to policyholders. So the good thing is that communities that participate in the National Flood Insurance Program make available to the residents of those communities flood insurance. And probably raise your hand if you are a flood insurance policy holder. Anybody here? You're all too smart to buy property in the floodplains, aren't you? <laughs> all right. I should have known. Should have known. But um, believe me, it's, it's a really important thing to have available to your community. Now, that's the goodies. The strings attached are any community that's going to participate in that program has to have ordinances that meet the minimum standards of the National Flood Insurance Program. And if you were to dig into the county's ordinances and compare them to the NFIP, you would find that the bulk, the dominant portion of the county's ordinances comes straight from FEMA. And so the reason I make that, try to make that clear is that sometimes people will, you know, it's weird because it's, it's federal regulations, but they're being, but the face of those regulations is people like Karen and Mark at the county. So it's locally administered, but mostly federally derived. And so people will say, why can't you give me a break on this? Why do you have to be so hard nosed? Well, the reason is uh, they can't because it's, a federal regulation and there are severe sanctions. The sanction for the sanction that the county would could experience for allowing violations of the federally derived regulations is to be kicked out of the National Flood Insurance Program. And what that means is there is no longer access to flood insurance through the NFIP. And when that happens, I've I've worked with communities that were under that threat not any in Colorado. When that happens, suddenly the NFIP becomes the most important thing that the county's got going on because people are really getting angry at the prospect of not being able to have flood insurance. Okay, I just got a signal. Okay, so, um, so this is a floodplain development permit. Again, that's a big part of floodplain management. Um, uh, enforcing the flood protection elevation for new structures in the floodplain. That's essentially 18 inches above the base flood elevation. If you've got a dwelling that's going to be built in the floodplain, you have to be 18 inches above. Floodway regulations. Now, this is an example of 
a regulation that's in the county ordinances, but it's federally derived, and there really is no latitude to provide variances on that. This is the thing that will get the county kicked out of the flood insurance program if they allow violations of this. Uh, special restrictions in growth management areas. So, for instance, the uh, city of Fort Collins has, has more restrictive uh, guidelines or requirements in the Poudre floodplain. And outside the city limits in unincorporated county, but in the growth management area, the county has agreed to um, enforce the city's special restrictions in the Poudre GMA. All right, so um, on the looking ahead part, we have good news. Some of you won't care at all about this, but it means a lot to, to some of us. That is that uh, the, there's been updated floodplain and regulatory maps that have been available technically for many years. They're finally becoming official and effective uh, soon, like, yeah, um, let's say months when it has been uh, kind of unknown in the past. Okay, last thing I want to mention, the county has a great and robust emergency flood warning system. What the, the graphic that you see on the right there, oh, by the way, one thing I forgot to mention, shoot, I, I had put, there it is, that web address right there has all kinds of really great information. If anything comes up that's of interest to you that's in a floodplain in Larimer County, an incorporated Larimer County, you'll find information that'll help you at that web page. Okay, now, flood warning system. Did you know that the county has installed a bunch of real-time rain gauges out there in the, especially in the mountain watersheds for the streams in Larimer County to help provide flood warning for people who need it, and also stream stage gauges. They're tied in, uh, they've got this web page. This is called Wet Map. You get to it through the Larimer County uh, Engineering web page. And you can look at the current readings of any rain gauge or stream gauge on the system. It's tied to LIDA, the Larimer Emergency Telephone Authority. And you can subscribe to LIDA alerts at that web address right there. Okay, I'm very sorry, Michelle. Are you done? Are you done? done. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we have Bill has a question. Again, clarifying questions is what we're looking for here. Thanks, Michelle. When FEMA sets its boundaries, does the county or your board have any interest or influence in suggesting to them that some of those boundaries may be in error and might want to change? That's a good question. And the answer is yes. Um, so first of all, the Larimer County engineer has influence on that. And in fact, uh, these these latest, these map updates that we've been talking about that have been out there for a long time, most of them were done by state funding, by uh, contractors that are working for the state. And over the years, they've had this rollout of the products when they were in um, very preliminary phases. They allowed the county, the cities and so forth to review the, the map products. And now I can't recall when the board has been asked to look at, I don't know, was the board ever asked to look at like the CHAMP mapping or? Yeah. And so so the answer is we weren't, we weren't brought into that. But if there was something, let's say that Mark or county engineering staff were looking at something that was really giving them heartburn, they might say, well, we really want to push back on this. And it, it would not be unheard of for them to make that, put that on the board agenda to look at this and say, what do you, what do you guys, what do you people think about this? So, so yes, the county has input and sometimes they'll ask the board to weigh in on that. Now, in the case of where somebody other than the state or FEMA is wanting to change a map for some reason, change it, um, 
because of, for instance, a project that that requires that that incentivizes them to try to change the floodplain. That's very much a county review thing, and the flood review board will be involved in that. You're welcome. Oh, Amber, you got a question? Thank you. Um, I may have misunderstood this, but when you said how would someone change the flood review plan, uh, the map, so for example, if I'm a private property owner with land, um, say in the 100 year flood, but kind of at the border, yeah. before I had any infrastructure or anything on there, could I build up that land and place berms and then apply for that? Or how would I apply for that? You can do that. In fact, that's a very special device called the Lomer Letter of Map Provision based on fill. And so say you're here at the edge of the floodplain and you say, well, if I just if I just add four feet of fill, maybe a hundred feet wide or something like that, now I can now I can do what I need to do. I can get that that portion removed from the floodplain with some constraints. Like you can't go into what's called the floodway. I mentioned the floodway. That's a special part of the floodplain. And floodway means don't touch, basically. And if you do touch, you've got really heavy restrictions that you got to meet. But if you stay out of the floodway, yes, you can place fill and then you can develop on it. And before you do that, you would apply for this letter of map provision based on fill. And you can't put basements on those <laughs> properties. That's not allowed. Thank you. Awesome. I think that's the time we have for John. So, John, thank you very much. I appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. I can't say I, I flood review board is the most engaging thing for me, but you did a great job. I appreciate it. Um, while Karen is changing up the PowerPoint presentation and Claire and Cecil are coming up here, just want to remind you guys, we are broadcasting and filming this tonight. So that's why I want you to use mics. Um, you know, you guys have all watched a video where you can't hear the question that's being asked or the response because people don't use the mic. So um, 